I want to jump in this week with a huge thank you to those of you who made it to the party last night for the Shepherd Symposium. That was so much fun. I don't think it was supposed to be legal, but um, it was awesome. And I really, really am so thankful for you guys coming and showing your support and just being who you are because you're all just such amazing people. So on that note, this is our punk debate for the week of April 8th. And I mostly want to talk scheduling with you today. There's a lot that we have coming up as the semester begins to come to a close. Just a lot of things to begin to think about and to put on your radar. So first of all, this week, for most of you, we are doing labs 21 and 22. T and Alaya will go on to lab 23. Callie, Carl, and Anna, you'll be meeting me in open lab this week. So that'll be something to look forward to as the week comes to a close. We, um, we are also looking towards a few things coming up relatively quickly. The practical exam is on the 29th and 30th, so on that Monday and Tuesday. And so we need to try to have things ready to go by the 26th. So if you guys could get questions picked out by midweek of the week of the 22nd, that would be great. And then we could get it all set up and ready for them to take on the 29th and 30th. I've been trying to set aside media and example results, but there will still be some things that we need to inoculate on that day of the 26th or maybe um, a little bit earlier in the week. I also wanted to make note that I really need to get your TA applications. You guys don't have to fill them out in entirety, but I do need to know your scheduling so that I can accommodate returning TAs first before I accommodate the newer TAs. We will probably have at least three TAs in every lab section, so it should be a really, really awesome team of people working next fall semester, and I'm excited for any of you who are able to come back. And of course, that for those of you who are graduating and won't, won't be able to be with with us this next fall. I also wanted to make a quick note that I would really like to have you all over for dinner and that would be, I think the best time to do that would be on either Thursday or Friday of finals week. And so that's not on this particular calendar, but that would be, um, that would be on the 9th or 10th of May. So looking at finals week, that's when I was thinking that dinner would be a good idea. So could you let me know which night, Thursday or, or Friday of finals week might work out well for you? And maybe we can work it out to have everybody, you know, for me to have everybody over and just to have a, a great time. So I think that primarily covers our scheduling for the week. And I'm going to go through some of the TA guidelines and talk just a little bit about some of the up and coming events. We, we do have... Um, in Lab 21, another day devoted to unknown identification, but it is on that day that your students need to actually confirm their unknown identity, assuming that they're not running behind. Some of them will be running behind, and that's fine, but we do want to make sure that for those that are not, that we get their identity confirmed, and we make sure that they're aware of the due date on the 17th or 18th for their unknown report, and that they've got that well underway. Also on this day for Lab 21, we want to make sure that the steam bath is going we're going to have quite a few students needing to do an endospore stain. And most importantly, we're going to want to have them do the MRV, MRVP test immediately when they walk in the room. So just get them reminded that they should do that. You can also ask who has a gram positive rod and have those people flood their starch side of their starch and spirit blue plate with iodine so that they can read for the halo uh, surrounding the, the, the growth on the starch plate. So just a couple of other, other comments on Lab 21. Uh, just it, the lecture is very straightforward, but we will be covering the Starch and Spirit Blue test. So we'll be explaining that test. And it's kind of nice if you can use one of the plates from one of the students as an example as you go through that. We'll also explain the Simmons citrate tube. So you can kind of um, grab students as they're looking and trying to interpret that test throughout the uh, early part of the hour and just let them know that we will be talking about it so it'll come in clearer as the lecture goes. Lab 22 is the first of the end of our lab coverage, meaning that we're jumping into applied and environmental microbiology. And in Lab 22, we're devoting one day to immunology. This is somewhat of an in-depth lecture, and I'm going to suggest that 
that unless you're really, really jazzed on this lecture, you do have either me do it or maybe Jacob do it, depending on the situation. If you've taken immunology and you just feel really good about it, then you should just jump in and go for it. Let me know if you want to use my colored water demo to show what types of blood people can donate and receive. It's a really nice one. And do take advantage of the TA guidelines as there's quite a bit of depth um, in background information allowing you to sort of recall some of the immunological concepts. One note on the Octorlone gels, with those they need to be incubated at room temperature and we usually put them in little Tupperware containers that are humidified. Those just go you know right side up and stay in that uh, in the room temperature incubator throughout the 48 hours. So the right stain blood smears will try to help students find on those the different kinds of white blood cells but in fact sometimes it is hard for them to find anything resembling a basophil or an eosinophil. Most of them won't be able to find one. Sometimes an eosinophil, actually, we have some slides that have an increased concentration of eosinophils uh, due to allergic reaction. For the blood typing station, it would be really great if someone could kind of hang out back there because their tendency is not to mix the, the neo blood very well. And really what you have to do is kind of break the surface tension as you're mixing with that and really spread it out to be able to see it. And then that really makes it a lot easier to read the results of that. If you don't get it mixed very well, it can be really hard to read. The other thing that can cause a lot of problems in reading that is that it, because it's not actually the hemagglutination and it's actually a chemical precipitate, the ratio of the antibody and antigen is really important, so it needs to be one-to-one. -one. So that's an important thing to maybe remind them of as they come back to, to check that. So if they do two drops of the antibody, two drops of the antigen, then that'll help them get good results that are visible for that test. Lab 23 is actually quite a big one and the one thing that I'll ask for somebody to be ready to go on the demonstration of the membrane filtration method, that is setting up those metal funnels with the membranes so that we don't get backlogs of so oftentimes the sewage, you know, it seems Murphy's Law is always that one that backlogs and gets all over the, the bench and sprays all over everything. So just make sure you're aware and of how those are set up so that you can help the students set them up and also demonstrate how to set those up. This is a fun lecture to give and there's also a lot of extensive TA guidelines. One of my TAs from a while back actually spent a lot of time redoing and rewriting these TA lecture guidelines. So this is kind of a fun, a fun one to give and very, very applied um, as a water micro really affects all of us and uh, is something that has not only environmental implications but obviously very, very much medical implications as well. So I think that's everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about. We should be good. And I hope that everybody had a super awesome weekend and that you're feeling a little bit rested. I know it's sometimes I feel less rested at the end of the weekend than at the beginning. Um, I think it's, it's the week catching up to me. But by Monday, I hope everybody will be feeling really good.